do me a favor. Make sure you hit that like button on this live stream. Get us in that algorithm good with YouTube. Hit that like button. Subscribe. If this is your first time on the channel. Welcome. We are two former NFL players. Years of experience between us. Starters on every level. Yeah. So when we say, you know, we know a little bit about the game, we know a little bit about the game, and we'll share that information with you. Uh, just kind of give you guys an inside uh, peek behind the veil when we can. Uh, and, of course, you know, our, our opinions are our own. Uh, but we, we like to think that, you know, our audience appreciates having a little bit of that inside edge. Uh, now, let's get into the uh, elephant in the room. Let's talk about that. Ooh. Jeff Saturday, folks. Jeff Saturday. A coach at a Dakula, Georgia. Yeah, that's right up the street. <laughs> right up the street. Right man. down the street. Has been given the interim head coaching job for the Indianapolis Colts. Frank Wright was fired today after an abysmal showing against New England. Three points, a whole lot of ugly. And, you know, if you really took a look at. The post game in Indianapolis, I mean, it clearly looked like there was a funeral out there for the Colts. Yeah. At least they didn't get him in the end zone like Herm Edwards. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they didn't get him in the end zone, but shit. This is like, you can already, this looks like a funeral from the jump. He don't even want to look at me. Ha ha ha. Wow. He don't even want to look at him. <laughs> Look at wow. how he's like, oh, sorry, sons of bitches. No, I, I have. I've heard of some other owners that, you know, if you're walking down the hallway, won't even look you in the eye. Just look oh, at the ground. Man, keep they, on moving. They're like, you fucking peon. Get out of here. Is, is get out of here. You guys are all going to be gone. Is he disabled? I don't want to say anything mean if he legitimately <laughs> can't walk. Oh, no. Oh, no. Ain't, ain't no handicap. Man, you've seen him drunk. You may have seen him on police DUI videos multiple times. He can walk. But say if he anything, he got drunk and fell down some stairs somewhere. This guy looks like he fucked his knee up or something. His ass. He, look at his eye. He just looks like he just looks lost. He's like, oh my god. Damn, Maybe I, just, I should sell this team. I just paid this sorry motherfucker ten million dollars. I don't even know this guy's name. He's like, who the fuck is nine? Who is nine? <laughs> Somebody get rid of this guy. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. I don't care. Man, it is ugly in Indianapolis. And I'll tell you what, I'm not, I'm not upset. I mean, fuck them. They beat us. I don't care. I will say that's, that's your mortal enemy. You know what I mean? That's Those are our mortal enemies. That, look, let me tell you, my, my time in Jacksonville, I swear to you folks, we would have had the AFC South division like three times. When I was in Jacksonville, if it wasn't for fucking Peyton Manning or was and the Colts, I mean, it's like it didn't matter how many games we won. If you couldn't beat Peyton Manning twice, <laughs> this wasn't gonna happen. You weren't gonna win it. Even when we went to the playoffs, my rookie year, two rounds deep, we didn't win the division because it was because of Peyton Manning. I mean, that's so, kind of how like him and Tom were successful all those years playing in divisions with. Average quarterbacks, you know, for the most part. Yeah. You guys had a yeah. couple pretty good ones, but uh, yeah. man, they weren't Peyton, unfortunately. They weren't Peyton, and I mean, wasn't nobody him at that point. So it was rough for us. But Jeff Saturday, what are your initial thoughts on this, man? Because I'm I'm conflicted. I mean, my, my first I want to say congrats. Was... <laughs> I want to say congrats because that's yeah. old line. I'm happy. An that's old line. line all day. Happy a former offensive lineman is. You know, getting getting some love, even though he wasn't you know, getting, a coach getting, per se. Getting getting <laughs> empowered, getting empowered by and, the by the by the franchise. What him and Andy Reid now is uh, former offensive linemen that are that are mm -hmm. now head coaches. You, you're getting a guy that's a hometown guy. You know, played most of his career there, but probably more importantly, uh, can call Peyton Manning. You know, any time of day and get his ear. Hey man, what you think about this in the red zone? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I know y'all couldn't, y'all couldn't get Peyton, you know, because I'm sure you got a billion other. Peyton was like, 
Hell no. <laughs> hey, you don't want to deal with that shit right now? Uh, you you know he called Peyton first. You know he called pa Peyton. Listen, Peyton. Because, hey, uh, listen, brother. We just we got some, it, we just... If we give it to Jeff, will you help him? <laughs> <laughs> they probably say, hey, Peyton, would you, uh, do you think there's any scenario where you could come in and, uh, no, no. <laughs> Absolutely no. not. I'm not going to be that guy you set up as an interim. Interim? No. Wait, wait a no. second. I need, I need 49% of the team. <laughs> what about Jeff? What about Jeff? Uh, I mean, if you, if, hey, he's good. Go get him. If, if he takes it, you know, if he calls me, I'll answer the phone. Don't ask me to do anything other than just give advice. Right. But apparently he was a consultant with uh, the Colts, which, hmm, interesting. I'm, I'm wonder if anybody's like fact checking that. They're saying he's been a consultant for the team, is in his ring of army. <laughs> Damn. How fucking, they're, they're how bad has it gotten? Anything. They're grasping for anything. <laughs> he has a. <laughs> He has a 70% uh, win record on Madden. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> how's your uh, how's, how's your franchise going on Madden? <laughs> well, we only got one loss. You got it. You're hired. <laughs> yeah, tell us anything at this point. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm not upset about the lack of, uh, you know, Rooney <laughs> Rule uh, applicants. I mean, obviously, in a, a midseason hire, that doesn't really apply because you can't bring in people. Uh, from other teams yeah. right now, it's I mean yeah. tampering or whatever. So it's, it's not as if you could go talk to Byron Leftwich or talk to Eric Bieniemy right now. Yeah, he couldn't uh, do it. And I don't even know who's available in the college ranks that you know would set. I mean, I guess you could go talk to Herm Edwards. There's <laughs> only one. Hey, even with picking Jeff Saturday, I would say you could have done worse. You could have went to college because yeah. I don't buy any college coach coming up into the league. Who isn't already? Who isn't running? Who isn't either uh, uh, been a coach in the NFL or, you know, is at least at least operating, you know, a, a, a team and an offense or, or, you know, in particular, in an NFL style kind of offense. I mean, the college football ranks, the way that football is played in college is so different than how it's played in the NFL. Even though they're both kind of pass heavy right now, the NFL is still kind of it's still yeah. fundamentally different. Sure. They're kind of adopting some college concepts slowly, but I, I agree with you. Uh, the only guys that you're gonna that are gonna be available is guys that are a on the couch, or b yeah. just got fired, <laughs> and those guys are available for a reason. So it's not yeah. like I'm beating down these guys' door. You know, the, the guys that just got fired. Who Urban Meyer? You gonna call him? Uh, Herm Edwards? You gonna call him? Are you excited about that? Her Edwards said, "Fuck it, I'm done. I just I don't care." <laughs> or uh, Matt tired Rule. as hell when he's <laughs> you gonna call yeah, Matt, Matt Rule? Rule? No, no pick up the no. pick up the remaining forty million fucking dollars or split the remaining forty million dollars with Carolina. Like the, this is probably as good I mean, a decision as you can make, other than promoting someone from within, knowing which, that they're gonna get fired at the end of the year. Which. It's kind of crazy that you have two former head coaches on that coaching staff and John Fox and Gus Bradley, who actually played for uh, with the Jaguars. And he went ahead and said, mm, nah, 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 nah. Hello, Jeff. Jeff, can you can come to work on Monday? Can you come in on win by Wednesday? <laughs> I mean, look, I am, I am, I am. I like that an offensive lineman, a former O-lineman, can get this kind of exposure. I don't necessarily like the process of it because, one, it's an interim job, which is, I mean, look, what is it really – what does this really mean? They're not – They're not. are they serious with him in any way outside of being an interim? Probably not. But – Or maybe he's the only know, guy that, you know, was okay with coming in for eight weeks. Yeah, Knowing but that that's you, it. your your options are limited, and at, you know I can look at this and say this is a this is a move for the hometown crowd. This is a move for Indianapolis fans because you know I can almost guarantee you when he walks in there on Sunday as the interim coach, they're going to cheer and they're going to show him a ton of support. You know, if they come out and you see the Colts playing with some kind of new energy, you know, maybe you know doing a little bit, doing better, but not maybe not great, but better than they've been doing, looking somewhat competent, you know, this crowd is going to want him to be their head coach. 
But the problem with that is that Can't I feel it. like this is another, this is a situation that we see in the NFL. It's a nepotism league, and this is a nepotism move. This is a good old boys club move. There's really no reason, logically, speaking from a logical standpoint, if you're talking about the NFL, the best tier of football, obviously, in the country, this multi-billion dollar machine where everything is supposed to be about precision and execution, you know, and, and just, just the perfect model for the sport. Strategically, this is probably the stupidest move, the most <laughs> ill-advised move that any team could make in having somebody to lead the team because the head coach is the leader of the team. He is, you're bringing a head coach's job even more so than the X's and O's to a certain extent is creating culture, creating a, a, a foundation for the team to, to build their, their mission statement on. And you do that with guys who have experience with that. You don't do that with guys who have literally no professional experience whatsoever. And I mean, I could, I, I mean, college isn't professional, but college is in a sense, a professional, a level of professional uh, 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 a position for a head coach, you know, you can look at that and say, yes, that's a pro, that's a pro spot. Head coaches who are, who are the highest valued in college, you know, they make a ton of money. So it's not like this is, you don't call them amateur coaches, but you know, you don't even have that. He was co he's coaching a high school, <laughs> high school, not he's even coaching a, good a high school dude. And I mean, not even, not yeah, even, I mean, come on, not even Buford. <laughs> what, what the, on, on, on seven days out of the week, you would look at this and be like, what the fuck kind of call was that? Why would you even consider it? Well, the uh, the Texans have reportedly considered Josh McCown the last two hiring cycles. And, and somebody slapped coach. that somebody and somebody slapped that owner and said, Don't do that. But they realized how stupid that. they're gonna look if they pulled the trigger. <laughs> you know, I mean it's it's a uh it's it's there. I mean, look, both things can be true, like being happy that he got this position and it being a good thing for the Colts in particular from just a morale standpoint. But, you know, also it's a very stupid decision. Like it's not, this is an owner making a decision in search of nostalgia of the good times. That's what I feel it is at the end of the day for Earth's sake. He knows the season is done. There's not, this is there. They are the, they are probably the biggest disappointment in the NFL in terms of what you expected them to do yeah. and what they've actually done. You had an offensive line that, I mean, I personally was like, this is a top. This is like a. I, I think I had them at six, sixth ranked offensive line. You know, we we did our when we did our our O line breakdowns and we ranked them. We put them at like six. So it's like this was supposed to be a line that propelled the the team into a position of postseason yeah. comp, uh, being a postseason competitor. They're supposed to run the ball, protect Matt, go to the playoffs. That was top in the yes. That was the top in the league playoffs. last year, number one in rushing last year, even with Derrick Henry out, but. You know, this was a team that was minus the quarterback position was supposed to be in position to contend in into in the postseason. Now, the quarterback position has been exactly what the Colts have not been able to solidify since Andrew Luck. Uh, and I mean, as you can tell, where the the way of the the way the quarterback goes is the way the team goes.